And I use a lot of video game terminology in my videos. And I think that it, I think that brings people a little more down to earth and people can see that I actually suck at some of the languages that I've, that I've studied for a while because it still affects me to this day when I'm studying a language, the comparison and wanting to, wanting to flex and wanting to speak perfectly, feeling like my progress is too slow or feeling like if I miss a day, it's the end of the world. But when people watch my content, I hope that it, it brings them back to earth. Welcome back to episode three of Refreshingly Honest Conversations with Language Learners. If you have been following me, Language Travel Adoptee, for a while, then you know that I take language learners' mental health and emotional wellness very seriously because it can greatly hinder our progress if we do not nurture them while on our journey. I give voice to successful language learners who are open about their mental health struggles while learning languages and ultimately how they made learning languages work most effectively for them. Enter Language Simp. We sat down to discuss how he takes care of his own mental health since beginning his language journey in 2019, his take on being a language creator, and what it means for him to show up authentically and confidently in his languages. Make sure to give a like if you do enjoy the interview and subscribe for more. Let's head over. Hey everyone, I just wanted to pop in and say I do host workshops year round online for language learners who are overwhelmed. They have a ton of interests in many, many languages. They feel overwhelmed with balancing life and language learning, multi passionate, and are looking for a solution to actually learn their languages effectively and with a lot of joy, creativity in a way that authentically works for them. Definitely go to the comment section in this video and check out what the next workshop it's going to be. I'd love to see you there. Language Simp really needs no introduction here. We are so glad that he is with us and for a really special down-to-earth talk. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for having me. I stumbled upon your channel maybe a few months ago and it really resonated with me. So when you invited me to do this on your channel, I was very honored. That was so surprising to actually get the first comment from you <laughs> under that one video yeah well naturally i'm recommended tons of language learning stuff that should be pretty obvious why and right. i get a lot of uh yeah i just saw one day and i forget what the title was i can't even remember what the video was but just watching it i said wow uh, she kind of she kind of gets it she's she's not like uh she's not trying to sell me something she's uh trying to help me that that's really what i'm trying to do and for everyone who is watching right now i'm going to kind of give an overview of that video because i also had to watch it again before actually giving this interview language that pierre had talked to me about wow like some of the stuff that you were talking about in terms of mindset and mental health with in the language learning community, you know, being a polyglot, being a language lover, however you want to label yourself, um, a lot of that really resonated with me through the specific video. So I will for sure link that down below um, for anyone who is interested. <laughs> the actual title of that video was, I was lying to you, my polyglot lie exposed and language learning mental health real talk. It's hard to talk, especially for me, about this kind of stuff when Again, I mean, there's just so much being thrown at you and like flashed at you, especially through the YouTube algorithm and everything. But I knew that there would be certain people that resonated with it. For anyone who's kind of looking for a little bit more context about what I said in the video, I was basically talking about how I made probably two years ago my own video speaking in nine languages. So Polyglot speaks in nine languages, and that is still like the second most watched video on my channel even though that is definitely not aligned to my value set now. But when I was making the video, I was not aligned with anything at all. I didn't know what I was doing. I was very just underlying anxiety. I don't know if you've ever experienced this language scent, but when you get used to having anxiety kind of as a background fan or having any sort of unpleasant feeling as a background fan, so much so that it just feels normal to you, like some, something is off, <laughs> but that's, that's what it felt like. And I was like, oh, I got to get this perfect. And oh, I'm editing this video. Oh, I said that horribly, even if it was just like one second, right? Oh, yeah. And it, it was so hard. And, um, and then I kind of went into more details about what others could do when they find themselves also kind of wondering about the pressure that they're feeling internally, what we do with all of these emotions and language learning. What specifically had, had resonated with you in that way, first of all? The age old trope of making a video and showing off how many languages you speak and then how how fake that tends to be, regardless of who does it. You know, even if I made a video tomorrow showing off all the languages I spoke, I'm sure I would edit it in some way that would leave out my blunders and would just uh, leave the mental health 
of uh, all of my viewers worse than it than it was before they they saw the video. <laughs> so my my new strategy with that type of thing is blindfolding myself and making sure there's no edits. So if I ever make a video like that, just to show the reality of it. But yeah, I think what resonates with me about that stuff is just people get into this hobby and they're super excited. They see all the YouTubers flexing all their languages and it's awesome. And you say, holy crap, there's this whole world. I can unlock all this DLC. I could learn Chinese, go to China, shock the people in Chinatown. I could I could learn Russian and speak online to everyone, all the Russians on the internet. I could do all this stuff. It's going to be so fun. This could be a lifelong hobby. But then when you get into it, you realize how much of a marathon it is. And you start to compare yourself with all these people who get quick results, but it's always fabricated. So when I saw your video, it was kind of a breath of fresh air. It was a really good take. I've seen other people kind of address the fake polyglot type thing and that kind of flex and how that can hurt your mental health. But I think you just did a really solid job of that, which I appreciated. I think I saw a parody of yours that <laughs> where you were talking in 12 languages, but you were just like, you guys are all stupid because you think that I'm totally speaking in this language when I'm yeah. like, <laughs> It was so funny. You mentioned knowing what kind of stuff you're putting out there, just being a big creator and knowing, being conscious at least of the effect that it could have on people just mentally. It's interesting too, because I had listened to a few of your interviews, especially with LingoCast. You guys who are watching the video, definitely check out that podcast. Knowing that people really get bogged down with wanting to speak fast or comparing or you know making mistakes, perfectionism, everything like that you had mentioned. And it sounds like with your channel and with all of your humor, that you bring to it that's really relatable like across all of these different cultures like you are hilarious but it's also a really beautiful thing what you're doing it really brings people together in a really unique way so I'm, I'm interested in kind of your take on that letting them see like another side to language learning of how you could see it yeah well i i think that language learning before i came in was largely academic it was just always an academic environment it was always how do you learn this language every single youtube video i saw about it was either flexing someone's language skills in a rather toxic way that that breeds jealousy and envy which is unfounded because these videos are edited or people or people just memorized phrases or you just had the tutorial videos of people explaining how to learn a language but i think when you become a language learner it's so much it's so much deeper someone who's interested in a handful of languages that probably means they're interested in geography and cultures and and music and camaraderie, all these different things that come together. And I think uh, I saw that void and I kind of brought more of a video game humor type aspect to it. And I use a lot of video game terminology in my videos. And I think that it it kind of not dumbs things down, but it 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 brings people back down to earth about it. It's not just this academic flex thing where it's like, oh, crap. I can't speak Russian at C2. I'm a failure. It's more so, oh, I'm learning Russian. That's funny. Like, look, I'm an American. I sound like an idiot. That's that's hilarious. I just cursed. That's funny. Like, haha. And uh, I think that brings people a little more down to earth. And people can see that I actually suck at some of the languages that I've that I've studied for a while. And hopefully they can see that I'm not afraid to show that I suck at them. And then therefore they can have more fun and not be in their head all the time because it still affects me to this day when I'm studying a language, the comparison and wanting to wanting to flex and wanting to speak perfectly, feeling like my progress is too slow or feeling like if I miss a day, it's the end of the world. But when people watch my content, I hope that it, it brings them back to earth. Making your own content, does it bring you back down to earth for what you are just facing mental health wise? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, I mean, because it's been a constant struggle since I started languages in 2019. Of course, you hop from language to language. It's it's a difficult hobby to get into because there's so much. I always say, kid in the kid in a candy store type environment because you start learning one thing, but then you see all these other sparkly languages and you hop back and forth. And that was always hard for me, sticking to stuff and also the comparison between other other content creators or just talented language learners online. So when I make videos, yeah, it's definitely uh, it's therapeutic in a sense when I'm. I'm putting out into the world what what my inner thoughts, what what has helped me to to better understand life as a language learner and not feel bad about myself. And I, I hope that that does help others. Yeah, no, I I think that's beautiful, and I think it's so authentic in such a language simp way. Like it's, I love it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Regarding me as well, whenever I mean, sometimes I would, you know, I take a break for maybe a week 
maybe a month, but then I'd panic and then kind of go back into it for being afraid to lose progress and everything. And there was one point where I took a break for almost a year. I mean, from any single language, even though, you know, my, my brain that said, you know, you're going to get behind, you're not being productive. But I knew that I, I was pretty much at a breaking point with where I saw my ambition just kind of taking me. And the way that I saw it with my sort of kid in a candy store version was seeing maybe not necessarily like all of these language because I, I wasn't really dabbling in languages until this year, but I would see, oh, this concept in this language and this concept in the same language. And like, they're just mm -hmm. going so deep, like down a rabbit hole. And I thought, oh, I'm going to master all of this. And then like the very small part inside me was like, no, Emily, you suck. Like, you're not gonna, you're not gonna <laughs> do all of this. What are you thinking? And I'm like, no, but I have to do it. Otherwise, like, what am I? What am I? Yeah, for sure. I, I think people just in general, they get way too caught up in thinking that taking a break is really going to ruin them or thinking that if they hop between languages, it's going to ruin them. Or if they learn a lesser studied language, it's the end of the world. All these different things that just prevent people from, from having fun. For me, I take breaks and I quit languages when I stop having fun with them. And I think that's the way to do it. And I just literally I'll study something for three months and I'll say, crap, I kind of don't like this. And I'll just let it go and I'll study something else. And maybe I hold on to some pieces of that and it's cool. But so many people get into this hobby and I receive it specifically on my Patreon all the time with people hitting me up saying like, oh, I just studied this for three months, but this is really interesting to me. Should I switch to that? Or I feel like I'm not making progress. It's always these types of questions. No one ever talks about how mental health is like the core thing blocking people from, from succeeding in this sphere. As you said, like there are so many different ways that language can be combined with different interests. Like, I don't think I've ever met someone who is not multi-passionate as a language learner. I feel like mm -hmm. that is inherent in what we bring. So it's interesting. What would you say to others who asked you, you know, I'm freaking out about taking a break? Well, I can give a little spiel and hopefully it makes sense and has something to do with your question. <laughs> but um, basically the way I see it is, your objective in language learning should be, if you want to learn multiple languages, it should be to pick just a handful, three, four, five in total. Maybe you can branch off in the future, but something like that. And then what happens is you learn one language. Let's say Russian is my first language and I spend months learning it and my progress goes up. When I feel like I'm at a breaking point with Russian, I switch to French and it's at zero, but then that goes up a little. And my rushing goes down a little when I'm doing French, but it doesn't go all the way down. And that's what people have to realize, if that makes sense. So you bounce back and forth, you go down and up, and eventually you hit the top with all your languages you're studying. But people think that if they study something, it just goes down the drain instantly if they switch to something else, but that's not the case. The way I do it, I study a language for a few months, and then I quit it for some time. And the progress, it, it goes down a little bit, but when I go back, after a week, I'm always at the same level, so. I see it too, just, especially now that I've started dabbling, right? I, I see like all of these balancing scales <laughs> kind of teeter, but they, none of them ever go back down. I mean, really, none of them really do. Um, I can tell you, I haven't spoke Spanish ser seriously in like two years. I'm, I kind of am interested in getting back into it and I'm not worried in the slightest. And it's just, it's just exciting. Try to take all the anxieties about that and turn that into excitement. If people did that, they'd be better off. When you're feeling anxious about something, if you can tell your brain, oh no, I'm just excited for it. You know, you've got you've got an interview for a job, you're so anxious about it. No, I'm just excited. I want the job, you know, and then you can kind of transform it into a positive. Just my take on it, when you had said that too, it really sounds like even if you think about that shift, you're thinking about, oh, what am I lacking? Into what what is out there for me and like the possibilities that exist, right? Yeah, like instead of, oh my goodness, I'm going to lose all my progress in German if I switch to Russian. No, well, I'm going to get better at Russian and then I'll feel better about German when I get back to it later. So it's a win-win in every case. I was wondering too, because when we had been writing back and forth a little bit, you had mentioned, you said you had taken um, a little bit of a break, which had then inspired you just at the time to make a video about it that was similar to to the one that I had introed at the beginning of, of this video. I, had, I did make a video that is relatively similar to that idea. It was just more so in like a language and brand. So I, I have a video, I don't know if you've seen it, but it's called Language Learning Sucks. It's basically like a three or four minute rant of just 
everything wrong with language learning and just pointing out how everyone shares the same thoughts that you have. You know, if you're sitting here anxious about language learning, you know, it goes through everything from, oh crap, maybe I should get a teacher. No, teachers suck. Maybe I should get a classroom. No, everyone says classrooms are awful for language learning. Should I buy a book? I don't know. I hate reading, uh, blah, 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 down the list of things, ways you could learn a language all the languages you want to learn, all interesting you at the same time so you can't concentrate. That was a dump of all of my emotions. That did come to fruition in some way. Especially when you got out of just your your most recent break, was there anything that you maybe like didn't mention in the video, but maybe changed your outlook on, on life or reiterated something about your outlook on life once you got out of that break? It's related to language learning, honestly. I think it's just when you when you're so bogged down in something, even if you're really enjoying it, like I was since 2019, basically no long language learning breaks for the whole time since I started January 1st, 2019. Coming off of, I, I did not study languages for, for two months. It was very shallow. Maybe I did a, a very little bit interacted with some of the languages I've learned, but coming back and then starting a new language, which was German, it was just, oh my goodness, it was like kid in a candy store, but 24 seven, just this is awesome. Every word is like a new type of candy. And it just, it was invigorating because I love language learning. It's just, it's such a fun thing. And if you can get rid of all these worries and just do what makes you have fun within this hobby, every, all the success will come with it. And uh, so I always preach on my Patreon specifically that you need to do whatever it takes to have fun when people, people should do what they, what they love to do. If they love Duolingo, they should do Duolingo 24 seven. They shouldn't even sleep. But if they want to do, if they want to take a course, then take a course, whatever it is. But uh, I just, it, it reiterated how much fun it is because I had such a, I was so deep in it and especially working, talking about languages all day. It was hard to see just how much I loved languages, but that all came back after a little break. Taking the pressure off of yourself in that regard, because Duolingo gets so much <laughs> hate as I've seen, but in all honesty, like what works, what works, right? Yeah, no, it didn't. Duolingo does work. I always talk about it. It's not the only way to, to learn a language, but the, uh, or you can't only do Duolingo to get fluent, but there are some words, my best language is French. There are some concrete words and grammatical structures that I know for a fact I learned on Duolingo back in 2019. Would I have learned them somewhere else? Yes, but Duolingo was a nice supplement for me back in the day. I've met some people who are teachers and who use it in their classrooms and especially with kids, it gets them hooked on it. You know, wanting to keep the streak, it makes sense. It's fun and uh, it gets a lot of kids hooked on language learning. So it's, I think it's a net positive. Also, I, I remember you had mentioned on uh, just other interviews, you, your very first language learning day for French, I think you said was January 1st, 2019, especially because I've noticed this with a lot of language learners' mental health in terms of thoroughly obsessed with whatever language or languages and then it starts getting you know where to the point where we've talked about before where oh like what what is this person doing or am i doing the right method and everything like that um so i'm wondering how did that sort of emotional journey look like for you i mean just a even away from like thinking about making content about it if you know what i mean like did it start for you like that and then it kind of took a downward turn or how, how would you phrase that for yourself I have to go even further back. So I watched a movie that had French in it and it had foreigners speaking French. So people who had to learn French, it's not their native language. And that made me realize that I could learn a language like that. Americans can learn languages. It, the, the thought had never even occurred to me that a human being can learn another language other than English. The, the thought never, maybe I kind of knew that people can learn Spanish because I, I live in the U S but I have never seen anyone learn Spanish. So it just occurred to me, holy crap, I could be awesome and I could learn another language. So it was awesome right from the get-go. And then I discovered Polyglot YouTube because I started Googling how to learn a language. And I knew from day one I was going to be a, a YouTuber in this sphere before I even spoke another language. I was filming videos like role-playing that I was going to be a YouTuber back then. I, I still have them. They're disgustingly cringe, but it's, uh, it's, it's good. So, And then I don't know. I would say that when I started making content about languages which was on TikTok and maybe, I think it was December, 2020. So uh, about two years into my language learning and that stuff just like went viral right away. It was definitely at that moment where the, uh, the balancing, putting your passion into an actual career became an actual issue for me. But, uh, and, and, and it led to times where 
I wasn't studying languages as hardcore, but I think that it was just realizing and remembering how much fun I have when I'm just doing the core aspect of this hobby, which is studying languages. I just love it. Sit me down for 30 minutes in front of a computer. I'm giddy. I'm shaking. I'm happy. But uh, maybe I had forgotten that because it was always, you know, what's the next video I have to make for a little bit. But um, if you do the core thing, everything else falls in, into place. And even for someone who doesn't have a channel, it's the same thing with results. If you just do the core thing and you enjoy studying your language every day, you will see the success and all the worries will be for nothing. That was a long-winded response to a very open-ended and philosophical question. I have no idea if I answered it. Ranting is honestly the best because we get we get down and kind of get into different uh, segues, especially being such a big YouTuber, just especially in the language space, but I mean, and all of YouTube really as well, with the comments that you get, because you must get a lot of comments. When you were really growing your channels, if comments like about your language learning skills in any ways, and this is really for all of the language content creators who may be a little bit sad when they hear like, you suck at Spanish or something like that. Like, did that ever get to you? Uh, you know, maybe I was a little more fragile, more sensitive to it at the start when I was on TikTok only, and I just started posting stuff and getting attention. That hurt a little bit, but at this point, I don't care in the slightest. I think it's hilarious. It's, it's especially funny. Sometimes it's true, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not very good at Arabic, but I love speaking the little bit I can. And when someone tells me I suck at it, it's just, it's funny. It's like, yeah, it, I, you're, you're not wrong. Um, but uh, no, negative comments, I don't think really affect me that much because the thing, I, I don't know if you've ever seen this or if you've ever experienced this when you're making videos speaking in another language, but it's often hard to even capture how good you are. Sometimes you come off as worse than than how you are because you're making a video. You kind of have to script it, or even if it's off the cuff, you still have to think about how you're making a video and it changes things. Sometimes I watch videos of me speaking in French, which is a language I am so freaking comfortable in. Like I could totally go live and work in France, but sometimes I watch the videos and I'm like, holy crap, that was stupid. Like, why did I say that? Why do I sound so robotic there? And it's because I'm trying to deliver a line that was maybe pre-written, maybe it was spontaneous, but it's still, I'm filming a video. So uh, it, it's hard to, it's someone's criticism without them actually listening to you and speaking in a natural conversation, it's hard to take that stuff that stuff too deeply. The only thing as a creator, sometimes you're self-conscious about like one little thing. You're like, crap, I have a pimple right here or something. <laughs> like, like sometimes I don't think that specific examples ever happened to me, but just sometimes you'll think about like one little thing. And then if you do find that one comment out of a thousand that does point to that, you're like, crap, I knew it. I'm a failure, something like that. It's it's interesting the things that we concentrate on, especially from a lens of like I'm creating this, I'm making this from me in a sense. And one thing that really resonated with me that you had just said, it's different. Like when you are having to think about and scripting and kind of like making this whole little world of a video in your head, even if you don't fully script it, like there's still something there because it is a video. This is what we're creating. And you might be worse than you actually are. For example, when you said that, I wish I could have told my two years younger self that the environment that we're in it can totally change things around for our languages so so much and that's just one example i'm wondering because i think it is a wonderful thing to meet someone else who has such a a different but also like similar way of being it just manifests so differently how i relate to you but i i see like so much authenticity in you and i think that that's amazing but it's very different from mine um and how and just how we present ourselves right but the fundamental thing is okay like how are we taking pressure off of ourselves today or do checking in with ourselves do do i really need a break from this okay you know that's fine so i want to let everyone know who's watching this video i always talk about really finding out more of really who you are how do you show up authentically in your languages and you see like two people showing up differently but they're being authentic to to themselves so if someone were trying to kind of figure out how they wanted to show up in their languages more themselves what do you think some of the first steps for them would be it's really just finding out what what you have fun doing within languages like why are you studying and what's your goal what what do you, not even what's your goal just 
the process itself is very fun for me. So, and I know it can be fun for anyone. You just have to figure out what makes you have fun. And then you're always showing up for yourself that way because when you go to study a language, it's a fun activity that you just really want to do. You can't get enough of it. Whenever someone gets into that state of crap, like I need to study today, I can't miss today, it's going to be 30 minutes. I think they're already, they're doing something wrong and they need to find something. And, you know, sometimes I'm sure there have been plenty of people who have studied and succeeded off of discipline, but that's not me. It's only passion. When I don't like something, I'm done. Like when, when I don't like a language, I quit and no shame. People joke about how I've quit so I've publicly quit so many languages. And I think it's hilarious because it's true. And I'm like, heck yeah, I quit tons of languages. You should too. You're probably people hitting me up saying that they hate German, but they're still studying it because they feel sunken cost fallacy stuff. Brother, just quit. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you if you do something for fun, if you can find your fun thing with languages, then I think you're always showing up for yourself. I see a lot of us enjoying so much of the process when we first kind of enter the language learning world, you know, if languages just kind of popped out of nowhere and we we started being like super passionate about it all at once. But then it's always like, as you said, like, okay, the end goal, like 30 minutes, we're already determining an end goal inside of our heads. And now, you know, the stakes are even higher for whatever reason that we're, we're thinking about. So it was great advice to, to keep in mind, help you ground in in your values of like how you want to live your life, <laughs> right? I mean, I'm I'm guessing a lot of people want to enjoy the process. I think a lot of us cognitively know it's not a destination, like life is a journey and everything, but it's so hard to convince yourself whenever you are just, you're habitually focusing on whatever end result there was out there. Everyone resident, I think literally every language learner has these struggles mm -hmm. and people just, uh, People just chalk it up to they beat themselves up over it. They say like, crap, I'm not disciplined or why can't I stick with a language or why can't I have these results? And I think literally I, I'd be surprised if anyone didn't have these. There was a thought that was on my mind a little before, which I forget what we were talking about, but something about when you first get into the hobby of language learning, it's it's really exciting. And when you first throw yourself into that passion, it's just so, so much fun. But then as you add the languages and over time, that that passion might kind of fizzle a little bit. I just think that's that's something that resonated with me. It's definitely, I've had those points, but then what happens for me is, and I've said this like 80 times in this video, but, but it's that I'm learning the wrong language or I need to take a break from that language. I need to study another thing because when I started German a few months ago, passion, just explosion. So uh, I just want to reiterate for anyone out there who feels stuck on something, regardless of the time investment you've done, regardless of how much effort you put into it, take a break, learn something else. You still love the hobby. You're just bogged down because you're, you've had tunnel vision on one thing for too long. You know, we we also look at who else is in the community and then we kind of conjure the sort of identity of what we think we're supposed to be or supposed to become when really it's so flexible. Like you can literally do anything, <laughs> so. You could do anything, yeah. Anything, like learn 10 conlangs to to C2 if you want, or go only study one rare dialect of Arabic, like do whatever you want. Exactly. Well, thank you so much, Language Sent, for, uh, for being here with us. Where else can we find you besides YouTube? Uh, I'm on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. All the handles are relatively the same. If you look up Language Simp, you will find me. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom. For the invitation. It was a great talk.